could it be? Maybe, maybe t is today the day that parts pairing is finally put to bed? I don't know. There's a lot of questions out there, and we're going to try to find out. So late last night, when we were all asleep, iOS 18 release candidate version was put out by Apple, which means that the iOS 18 much promised that's going to put an end to parts pairing is out. And we can try it to see whether or not we can finally just do the unthinkable. Take an old phone and take parts out of it and put it into a different phone and have them work. Is that too much to ask? Let's find out. So we're going to start here by trying to fix Greg's phone. So as of yesterday, Greg had really limited options to fix this fairly classic problem. He's got a boot loop, Apple logo loop, and it's because of a very minor drop of water in one special place, which is at his flood illuminator. I know that Greg's phone has a flood illuminator problem because it's really easy to fix it. All I need to do is take the offending flood illuminator right here and disconnect it. And then let's watch and see if his phone will boot right up. It did. So wait, what? What was that easy? What was so easy there? Let me show you. All I did was simply disconnect this piece right here. The flood illuminator is part of this assembly that has their top uh, speaker assembly, it's got our proximity sensor, ambient light sensor, and the flood illuminator. So what does this piece that I disconnected really look like? Here is a screen that has a flood illuminator assembly attached to it. And here is a flood illuminator assembly that I've taken off. So this is the piece that was the problem. This is the piece that was the problem all along just this little tiny guy here. So what's the solution for Greg's phone as of today before parts pairing is potentially put to rest? Here's what it looks like for Greg. Greg's option number one. He can go to Apple self-service and he can order a brand new flood illuminator, but it comes with a screen that he doesn't need. This piece is Greg's option from Apple Authorized Repair. This cost $267 as of today in September 2024 to solve the single drop of corrosion <laughs> that's making his phone boot loop. So his other option is we could just simply leave Greg's entire flood illuminator assembly off, disconnected, and he would be able to boot up and use his phone so he could access all of his data, but he would be missing all of the functions that are on this flex. So he wouldn't have a proximity sensor, he wouldn't have an ambient light sensor, he wouldn't be able to hear through the top speaker, and face ID, that's what the flood illuminator is part of, that wouldn't work, so no face ID is the big one. So that's a lot to give up just because of a tiny drop of water under here. What's his other option? Well, I could take Greg's flood illuminator and I could go under the microscope and with my hot air station and soldering iron, I could attempt to remove the corrosion and that usually is what we do. But that requires a lot of specialized fancy tools and training. And if you are just Greg sitting at home, that's not gonna be an option for you. So what else can you do? Well, you can buy another one of these that is aftermarket and you can plug it in, but the flood illuminator will not work because it is paired to the CPU. What else could you do? Well, you could go to the junkyard. Let me go to the junkyard right now. All right, here in my junkyard, I have a recently recovered iPhone 12 Pro sent here for data. It had a short circuit. And they said, you know what? I replaced the phone, you can keep it. So this is now my working iPhone 12 Pro and I programmed it, Face ID does work. Face ID does work, come on Face ID. Yeah, there we go. 
face ID does work. It just recognized my face. I would like to be able to take the, the flood illuminator or even the entire screen from my iPhone 12 Pro and just swap it over to Greg's phone so that he could have working face ID. As of today, as of iOS 17.5, that will not work because of parts pairing. Apple says, no, you cannot take a working OEM face ID and everything about it works. You cannot take this OEM Apple part, stick it on Greg's phone to fix it. No, no, your only option with Apple is the $276 part plus labor. So is that going to change with iOS 18? That's what we're about to find out. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take my screen and my flood illuminator proximity sensor assembly, take that whole piece, and let's put it on Greg's phone, which is currently on 17.5. And then we're going to update Greg's phone and see what happens. Does parts pairing go away? Are we going to celebrate the victory lap for right to repair today? Let's find out. Greg's phone. Disconnect battery. Greg's screen. Parts phone. Parts phone. That took so long, that's why I don't do live stream. All right, now let's boot it up and see what happens here on iOS 17.5? We'll tuck, tuck in the front just so that the Face ID cameras can shine up through here. Now, what are we expecting? We're going to expect that a phone on iOS 17.5 and all other versions of iOS is going to notice that it has a different screen. So let's see if it does. So we're going to. Now let's look and see what happens when we try to set up and use Face ID, which it should work, right? His phone isn't boot looping anymore, and we have plugged in my Face ID or my Flood Illuminator Flex. So let's see what happens. Let's go try to set up Face ID. Face ID. OK, let's try it. Set up Face ID. How to set up it? Yes, let's do. And there it says, face ID not available. Well, here's what we're curious about. What happens if we update Greg's phone to iOS 18? Um, before we do that, though, let's check in on one other thing that tells us display unknown part. And there is our message, our unknown part message, which I'm going to say this one time. <laughs> I want to make sure that everybody, everybody's listening in the back. Stop trying to hack around these messages because these messages are not bad. The reality is I have put a part on Greg's phone that I got from somebody else. It is an unknown part. It does happen to be Apple OEM, but it's not the it's not the native display. There's nothing wrong with that. This display is great. I mean, it's OEM Apple. Works beautifully. But yeah, it's had a whole other life in somebody else's phone. If I try and to, and to hide that message from Greg, think that is wrong. If I try to take off these little chips and move them around and get one from his old display and transfer it, over, I think that's bad. I think that's fraud. And I don't think you should do it. All right, with that said, now let's see what happens to these messages and what happens to Face ID. It's time for us to update Greg's phone to iOS 18. All right, we're going to save his data and we're going to hit flash. So we have iOS 18. Let's check settings about and 18.0. Now let's look. We've got a new setting here, parts and service history. Click it. And it says, it 
It says face ID issue. Boo. That doesn't look good. That doesn't look good for our ability to take a completely working OEM Apple flood illuminator from a completely working face ID on a completely working 12 Pro and transfer it over here. It says issue right here, face ID issue. On the relatively plus side, if you care about dumb things like messages that tell you your phone's been repaired, which I think are stupid to care about if the phone has been repaired, it says display. A new display was detected. Yes. Restart to configure your new display for this phone. OK. Let's see what happens if we do this. So restart and finish repair. Unable to configure. There may be a problem with the server or network. Please try again later. Oh, good. This, this dance, my favorite. Ah. Boo! This is a huge, huge bummer. I really thought, I really was dumb enough to think that this might actually work. I thought that with the right to repair being passed in Minnesota and Oregon and California and New York and cool places like that, that maybe we would finally be allowed to take a part from here, a working iPhone, and put it in there and have it just work. But no. <sighs> All right, let me see if I can get through the restart and finish repair. See what happens. Let's go down this fun rabbit hole. Diag mode, continue. Oh, good. Choose a, choose a network. We'll choose the iPad rehab network. All right, let's give it one more chance. Maybe it needs to create some kind of marriage. Let's not flip a table yet. Let's agree to this bullshit. That was the thing that said, Jessa, do you agree to allowing Apple to take a complete image of your device in order to check the box? All I'm trying to do is make this piece, this tiny, I'm trying to just not have to pay $276 for this thing, which is worth about maybe 15 bucks you go look for this replacement aftermarket piece, it is a $15 piece. Can I just get a $15 piece for $15 and not $276? Is that too much to ask? OK, finish repair. Yes, all right, let's do. Let's finish repair configuring. This is going to work. Of course it's going to work. There we go. Restart phone to continue using your phone. Fair enough. Restart phone. Restart. All right. So now what we have, again, is Greg's phone that has my iPhone 12 Pro screen, including my 12 Pro, whatever you want to call this piece, flood assembly, that piece. This is the only thing that was wrong with Greg's phone. And his which is right over here, has a tiny bit of corrosion. If we took it apart, we could see the corrosion right there. We could potentially use micro soldering to fix that, which is what we normally do. But it would be really better to take something that's water damaged to the point that it's corroded and throw it away and just replace it with another one. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's going to work. It's gonna, of course it's going to work. One of my favorite things today was uh, our intern, Bridget, coming in. We're like, yay, right to repair, might have won, it might be a big success. And she's like, all parts pairing went away for all devices across all times, even iPads? No, no, don't be silly. The, the, that a person was so young to think that that might be true. OK, base ID, yes, 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 we do want to set up Yes, let's do it. We're going to do it. Set up Face ID. How to set up Face ID. Get started. All right, here we go. It is not going to say Face ID unavailable. No, 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 no. It's going to show me the little circle. And I'm going to be doing this in just a second. Get started. <gasps> no! Flip a table. Face ID unavailable. Oh, I'm 
I'm so bummed out. It's not working, Brad. It won't let me use this flood illuminator. This sucks. Is it true that camera? No. Stop having wishful thinking. Brad says, oh, that flood is working fine. Maybe something else is wrong with Face ID. <sighs> Which means we're going to have to prove that, but not today. Ah. Boo. All right. Face ID is not working. We're not allowed to have a working flood illuminator unless it was put there by God, all, I mean, Apple Almighty itself. <sighs> All right, let's at least go look and see about our display. So we have already done finish repairing your display. We've already done that. Thank you very much. OK, parts and service history. All right, parts and service history says display. A new display was detected. Restart to configure your new display for this phone, which we've already done. And sir, Face ID issue. Restart and finish repair. Restart and finish repair. We've already done that. Restart and finish repair. All right, and so all it's doing now, our only remaining shred of hope with stupid iOS 18 and parts pairing is that maybe iOS 18 will let me put a OEM Apple display. It certainly doesn't work for aftermarket. That's well established. Maybe it will let me take another Apple display from another phone and actually use it as a part for repair without saying, I don't know what display is put on. Meaning that, of course, it does know what display is on. It's always known. It's going to actually connect to this Apple display made by Apple, made on the exact same assembly line as Greg's original display. This is from another iPhone. Maybe the shred of progress that we have in parts pairing with iOS 18, maybe this device will, will stop saying, I'm unable to tell you if there is a genuine display when there is a genuine, and by genuine I mean branded, branded by Apple display on the phone. So that's the only, moving the ball forward is that, that little tiny bit, which I don't even think that's working. I don't even think that's going to work because we've already been here today. Apple will verify that the parts used in your recent repair are functioning correctly and can be configured for this phone. Yes, please cut my steak for me, Apple, please. Connect, choose a Wi-Fi network. I've already been connected. I've already done this. iPad Rehab Public. Practical Board Repair School. All right, don't tell the dog groomer next door. All right, only she can't know. The rest of you, it's fine. You can come have our Wi-Fi. All right. And this is a loop. So now they're just trying to wear us down. Repair assistant privacy, already done, asked and answered, Apple. So it looks like the tiny little, maybe a millimeter that we were hoping to move the ball forward, giving up the cool thing, which was being able to actually bring back face ID from a real fault, real common fault, drop of water at flood illuminator. That's apparently off the table. No, no part for you. Maybe we can at least have Apple accept and recognize our genuine display when we're putting a genuine display on there. Let's see. Now keep in mind, this display on my phone, this is my phone, works and Face ID works. Like I just, I just used it before I started. All right, it's restarting for the second time. Sometimes things take a couple of tries. Let's see what happens here. Back to the beginning. Let's see. And survey says. General. About. Parts and service history. Boo, it's a loop, it's a loop. Here we go around again and we've danced this dance before. All right, so in conclusion, what have we learned here today with Greg's phone? Nothing changed, iOS 18 did 
not a thing for Greg's phone regarding parts pairing. Parts pairing is just as bad as it was before. This phone is still complaining about not having its native display, which is over here. If it's not this display right now, maybe it's because it's a beta, I don't know. This CPU, Greg's CPU, cannot get married to this Apple OEM display. And if you might be thinking, well, maybe it's in loss mode. No, it's not. This is my phone. I own this phone. This phone works. This display works. It is locked to an iCloud account, but it is not locked to a lost account, which I totally get it. That makes absolute perfect sense. I have no problem with Apple for saying if someone cared enough to mark their phone as lost or stolen and you take parts from it, if we detect parts from a lost or stolen device, then we're not going to activate them. Fair enough, fair enough. This is my working screen. This is an OEM genuine, OEM Apple branded screen. That works and has nothing wrong with it. And yet Greg's OEM iPhone will not accept this display. And it will not accept the, the paired flood illuminator and Greg's flood illuminator has corrosion on it. So right now, I have no choice to fix Greg's phone other than the crappy option of number one, paying $276 for one of these on a screen that I do not need because that's the only way Apple will sell one of these. So Apple self-service, IRP, authorized repair, any of those, I could pay 267, I think, 267, 270 bucks for this $15 thing. Or I can just leave it disconnected, in which case Greg will not have ear speaker proximity ambient light sensor or you know, any of those functions. Or I can put one on that's a perfectly functional flood illuminator that I just used on the phone that is paired to, but I'm not allowed to pair it to Greg's phone, and that is bullshit. So, you know what? If you live in any of the states that have passed right to repair legislation, go to repair.org right now. They have a guide where you can click on your state, and they in that article they tell you how to file a complaint this is not okay it's not okay for us to be forced to spend about three hundred dollars on crap that we don't need we have to buy like an entire minivan door just because the little lock part is broken and it shouldn't have to be that way when this part is easy to get right there there's dozens of them laying around this shop and I can't plug it in because of parts pairing, and that is wrong. Go complain about it. Complain to the FTC if you don't live in those states, and all of that where to complain, how to complain. It's your responsibility to complain about this, so gets to complaining. And I will see you next time.